with innate non-specific immunity. So we are constantly being exposed to infectious agents and yet in most cases we are able to resist these infections. It is our immune system that enables us to resist infections. The immune system is composed of two major subdivisions, the innate or non-specific immune system and the adaptive or specific immune system. The innate immune system is our first line of defence against invading organisms and the adaptive immune system acts against our second line of defence and affords protection against the exposure to the same pathogen. The immune system requires some time to react to an invading organism, whereas the innate immune system includes defences that for the most part are constitutively present and readily mobilise upon infection. Secondly, the adaptive immune system is antigen specific and reacts only with the organism that is induced to response. In contrast, the innate system is not antigen specific and reacts equally well to a variety of organisms. Finally, the adaptive immune system demonstrates immunological memory. It remembers that it is encountered an invading organism and reacts more rapidly on subsequent exposure to the same organisms. In contrast, the innate immune system does not demonstrate immunological memory. All cells in the immune system have their origin in bone marrow and they include myeloid, which is for neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, macrophages, and zytic cells, and lymphoid, which is B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte, and natural killer cells which differentiate along distinct pathways. The myeloid progenitor stem cells in the bone marrow give rise to erythrocytes, platelets, neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells, whereas the lymphoid progenitor stem cells give rise to the natural killer cells, T cells, and B cells. For T cell development, the precursor T cells must migrate to the thymus where they undergo differentiation into two distinct types of T cells, CD4 T helper cells and CD8 P cytotoxic T cells. Two types of T helper cells are produced in the thymus, the Th1 cells, which help the CD8 plus pre-cytotoxic cells to differentiate into cytotoxic T cells and Th2 cells. These Th2 cells help B cells differentiate to plasma cells which secrete antibodies. The main function of the immune system is self, non-self discrimination. The ability to distinguish between self and non-self is necessary to protect the organism from invading pathogens and to eliminate modified or altered cells such as malignant cells. Since pathogens may replicate intracellularly, viruses and some bacteria and parasites, or extracellularly, most bacteria, fungi and parasites, different components of the immune system are evolved to protect against these type of pathogens. It is important to remember that infection of an organism does not necessarily mean diseases since the immune system in most cases will not be able to eliminate the infection before disease occurs. Disease only occurs when infection is high, when the virulence of the invading organism is great, or when immunity is compromised. Although the immune system for the most part has beneficial effects, there can be detrimental effects as well. During inflammation, which is a response to the invading organisms, there may be local discomfort and collateral damage to healthy tissue as a result of toxic products produced by the immune response. In addition, in some cases, the immune response can be directed towards self tissue, resulting in autoimmune disease. Let's have a difference, looking at the difference between non specific and specific. So, on one hand, it's antigen independent, it's immediate, it's not antigen specific, and it results in no exposure to immunological memory. Well, specific immunity is antigen dependent, there's a lag time between exposure and maximal response. Antigen specific and exposure results in immunological memory. Looking at the organs involved in non specific immune response, you can see the skin, the GI tract, the lungs, the nasal pharynx, eye, circulation, lymphoid organs, and serum. The active components, the squamous cells, the columnar cells, tachyo cilia, lactoferrin, transferrin, interferons, TNF alpha, you can see all the various mechanisms of what they do. For example, TNF alpha is antiviral and involves an activation of fetocytes, lysosomes, peptidoglycoride, lyolysis, tachyo cells, the microcellular ele elevator, surfactant. Etc. And complement is involved in opsonization, enhanced phagocytosis, and inflammation. Anatomical barriers are very effective in preventing colonization of tissues by all microorganisms. However, when there is damage to tissues, the anatomical barriers or breach, the infection can occur. Other infectious agents have penetrated tissues, another innate mechanism which comes into play, namely acute inflammation. Cumulal factors play a role in inflammation, which is characterized by edema and the recruitment of phagocytic cells. These humoral factors are found in serum or they are formed at site of infection. The system and complement system is a major humoral non specific defence mechanism, and once it is activated, it can lead to increased vascular permeability, recruitment of phagocytic cells, lysis, and opsonization of bacteria. So, regarding the coagulation system, depending on the severity of the tissue injury, the coagulation system can or cannot be activated. Some products of the coagulation system can contribute to the non specific defences because of the ability to induce vascular permeability and act as chemotactic agents. For phagocytic cells. In addition, some of the products of the coagulation system are directly antimicrobial. For example, beta lysin, a protein produced by the platelets during coagulation, can lyse many gram positive bacteria by acting as a cationic detergent. 
Lactoferrin and transferrin binds iron, which is an essential nutrient for bacteria, and these proteins limit bacterial growth. Interferons are proteins that can limit virus replication in cells, and lysozymes break down the cell wall of bacteria. Interleukin-1 induces fever in the production of acute phase proteins, some of which are antimicrobial because they can opsonize bacteria. So looking at cellular barriers to infection, part of the inflammatory response is recruitment of polymorphial nucleus eosinophils and macrophages to the sites of infection. These cells are the main line of defense in the cell non-specific immune system. These include neutrophils, macrophages, and natural cells, lymphocyte, activated killer cells, and eosinophils. So neutrophils are polymorphial nuclear cells are recruited to the site of infection where they feed cytos invading organisms and kill them intercellularly. In addition, these can contribute to collateral tissue damage that are caused during inflammation. Macrophages and newly recruited monocytes differentiate into macrophages and also function in phagocytosis and intercellular killing of microorganisms. In addition, these macrophages are capable of extracellular killing or infection of, or altering self-target cells. Furthermore, macrophages contribute to the tissue repair and act as antigen-presenting cells, which is required for the induction of specific immune responses. For natural killer cells and LAK cells, these are non-specifically kill virus infected in tumour cells. These cells are not part of the inflammatory response, but they are important in non-specific immunity to viral infections and tumour surveillance. And eosinophils are proteins that have granules in them that are effective in killing certain parasites. So looking at neutrophils and polymorphic nuclear cells, these are phagocytic cells that have lobe nucleus. They can be identified by the characteristic nucleus or by an antigen present on the cell surface called CD66. They contain two types of granules, the contents of which are involved in the antimicrobial process and the pro antimicrobial properties of these cells. The primary azeophilic granules, which are abundant in run newly formed PNMs, contain cationic proteins and defensins that can kill bacteria. Proteolytic enzymes like elastase and cathepsin G to break down proteins, lysozymes to break down bacterial cell walls and characteristically myeloperoxidase, which is involved in the generation of bacterial cytokine components. The second type of granule found in more mature PMNs is a secondary or specific granule. These contain lysozyme NAPDH oxidase components, which are involved in the generation of toxic oxygen products, and characteristically lactoferrin and iron chelating protein and B12 binding protein. Macrophages are phagocytic cells that have a characteristic kidney shaped nucleus. They can be identified morphologically or by the presence of CD14 cell surface marker. Unlike PMNs, they do not contain granules, but they have numerous lysozymes which have content similar to PNM granules. Looking at natural killer cells, these are also known as large granular lymphocytes because they resemble lymphocytes in their morphology, except that they are slightly larger and numerous granules. These can be identified by the presence of CD56 and CD16 and a lack of CD3 cell surface markers. These are capable of killing virus infected and malignant targeted cells, but are relatively insufficient in doing so. However, upon exposure to IL-2 and interferon gamma, these become lymphokine-activated killer cells, which are capable of killing malignant cells. Continued exposure to IL-2 and IFN gamma enables the LAK cells to kill transform as their malignant cells. So LAK, LAK cell therapy is one approach for treatment of malignancies. These cells, these are not are morph morphologically distinct cell. They, it is a cell that mediates antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. In ADCC antibodies, these acts are linked to bring the K cell and the target cell together to allow killing to occur. K cells have on the surface an FC receptor for antibody, and they, they recognize, bind, and kill target cells called to have antibodies. Killer cells that have FC receptors include natural killer cells, LAK cells, and macrophages. Have an FC receptor for IgG antibodies and eosinophils have an FC receptor for IgE antibodies. So these are the different types of effector cells such as neutrophils, macrophages, NK cells, K cells, LAK cells, eosinophils, and the different identifying markers and functions I can see here, and whether they participate in phagocytosis or not, and whether they're known not to be in the case of LAK cells. So in the case of eosinophil, IgE, CD67. In the case of neutrophil macrophages, then K cells, K cells, these are all IgG, and then CD67, CD14, CD56, and CD16 for neutrophil macrophil and K cells respectively.